welcome to the United States Paranormal Podcast. Sit down and buckle up for an enlightening ride through everything cryptid, creepy, and paranormal. Hello, all of my paranormal freaks out there. It is I, Golden Jay, with... The Rocker Chick. <laughs> and... Jay Dub. We paused there. Why well, yeah. you know you don't do that all the time? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was pretty uh, spectacular. I deserve a pause before I announce myself. <laughs> <laughs> J Dub was talking about the rocker chick the other day at work. Yesterday, she said that you need a shirt with a skull with the given the rock and roll sign on yeah. because you're the rocker chick. I did, because I want one. I was like, but she needs one. She's a rocker chick. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I I really ought to uh, show you some pictures sometime of uh, of her rocking the bass on the stage. Yeah, yeah, with her long hair all done up. It was almost like, you know, this was this was late 2000, what, 2008, somewhere right around there, 2008, 2009. Mm-hmm. And uh, she still had the big hair like when she was still, <laughs> she was still in the 80s. Hey. <laughs> you had some big hair back in the 80s. Mm, not really. Are you sure about that? I don't know. I think we have photo proof of your very large hair high school yeah i had big hair were you in high school in the 80s yeah <laughs> <laughs> do you see where uh, you yeah. see where i was going with this or is it uh, am i just too far i've gone off through kilter? phases yeah I've you've gone, gone through phases. phases okay can you break some of these phases down for us a little bit not really I've no. through, yeah i've all through high school, I had like brown hair, and sometimes it was long, sometimes it was short, sometimes it was poofy. <laughs> sometimes, <And then> sometimes. <laughs> I looked like Lloyd from Dumb and Dumber for like. You had a bowl cut. Yes, it really? was like the thing in kindergarten for second grade, and my mom's like, "It was only kindergarten." I said, "Well, I looked like Lloyd." <laughs> <laughs> I sure did. Good guy. Okay, so uh, everybody, I know Jen's mom and dad. I don't, I don't know them like really, really well, but we've we've talked a couple times, and uh, her mom was always, you know, smiling and excited to see me. But I wonder if I can get one of those pictures. I would fucking kill her. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Hmm. We are on a mission now. You can ask her. I will ask her. And I will tell her. I'm going to post it online. She's going to be like, it was only kindergarten. I'd still. No, it was not. <laughs> I think that would be great. Then I had a perm where I looked like a friggin' poodle. It was all frizzy <laughs> and nasty. It wasn't pretty. Um, so you, you you can tell I'm wearing my United States of Paranormal t-shirt, the golden oldies with, uh, with uh, myself on it. Mm-hmm. You know, with my mullet. mullet, yeah, with my <laughs> mullet and uh, my golden, my golden jade chain on it. Um, yeah, that was Logan's big thing. He always liked to tease me about my hair and our wedding pictures. I, I wanted that, that wave, you know, the John Bon Jovi wave type thing. It never turned out right. It just looked, <laughs> it looked like. So here I am with this long hair and. Because I had the long hair. It was never really a tall, poofy hair like all the girls wore, but um, it was still it was still pretty. I had big hair. Pretty. I was, I was pretty. I was yeah. very pretty. Very big hair. <laughs> but yeah, all our wedding pictures have us in it, so they, we get teased about that all the time. Maybe we should just do that. Maybe I should just get a picture of all of us in our horrible hair days. J-Dub with her bowl cut. <laughs> Just call me. Lloyd. I just want to. Does it? Did it have the part right here that looked like the V? <laughs> I think so. I think so. I just. I don't really remember, but I just remember I, that. I want that picture so bad. At least my tooth wasn't chipped, though. You know, like Lloyd's. That's, there you go. I, <laughs> I. I think that this ought to be a thing. I think I. I'm gonna go on the hunt. I'm gonna see if your mom will give me that picture, and and I'll just do a little post on uh, on uh, Facebook or Instagram and. It'll be amazing. It's whatever. <laughs> I don't care. Oh, yes. 
That's just good stuff right there. Mm-hmm. The viewers, I think, would like to see that. I'm sure they would. <laughs> if you'd like to see it, just email us at the United States of Paranormal at gmail.com. Hey. It's great. Speaking of emails, I want to thank uh, both uh, Leonard and Peter for sending emails. Um, of course, both uh, story ideas we are definitely looking into. Um, Peter sent one with the correlation between Bigfoot and UFOs, and this really has me intrigued, so I'm getting ready to do a major deep dive. But I want to thank you guys for the emails and yes, let you know. You. Yes, let you know that we are looking into those, and uh, we'll have hopefully have stories on those here uh, relatively soon. And get the rocker chick after it again. Hey. Yeah. Hey. 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 But yeah, guys, thank you so much for the emails. You don't even know how how much we appreciate it. So, so keep them coming. United States Paranormal at gmail.com. And of course, you know, you can always check us out on the web at www.unitedstatesparanormal.com. And you can get one of these golden oldies t-shirts right there, right on there. They're brilliant. Brilliant. I, of course, you know, the empire is moving on and we are working on the... Uh, merchandise for for uh golden image podcast um murder nerds uh the call guys a court of books and booze and the newest podcast coming in june golden 80s so i got my sample t-shirts in the mail a couple days ago i was super super excited that golden 80s one is fucking off the hook you Tell me you didn't love it. I loved it. It was nice. Yeah. I want to see it. I can't remember what I said. Looks like Coors Light. I, or is that, I mean, is that it the was, one? It's just, it's, it, the, the t-shirt itself is that, the color, it's kind of that off gray. And, you know, it's a retro, uh, retro logo that uh, our, our friend Esteban did for us. And he's the one that did all the United States paranormal stuff. And he's just an amazing artist. So I got him to do the Golden 80 stuff. And yes. yeah, he's just amazing. So. Yeah, it's like a flashback to Miami Vice slash, you know, anything else in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm loving it. So hopefully soon you'll be able to go to goldenmojo.com and the merch page will be up there along with the individual pages. And I told you we're working on stuff to talk more to our listeners and our fans. So we are working on a Discord and trying to get that up and rolling uh chico noise is working on that right now so not that it's like difficult but you know it's still i don't know a ton about discord so i'm learning as we go here so that's coming and we'll be able to talk directly to you and maybe do some maybe do some uh, really cool stuff through discord where nice. everybody can join in all right let me ask you something <laughs> 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 let me ask you this. Oh, let me ask you this. <laughs> Would you rather... Oh, shit. This is a rather question. Lose all your memories or never be able to make new? Ooh. You know, I got some pretty great memories. I'd hate to lose all those. He lives in the past a lot, so... <laughs> Really? You talk about the past all the time. Same thing over and over again. So But I would say your answer would be that you don't want to lose your memories. I don't. I don't want to lose my past memories. I mean let, let me ask you this. <laughs> <laughs> if you lost your past memories, that means all the memories of your children growing up, uh our wedding, uh, you know, the trips to Texas, uh, you know, um, all that stuff would be gone. I get it. So I'd like to keep my memories. And I i mean, if it, I don't get to new, make new ones, then I got some pretty great old ones. So I'm pretty good. Yeah. What about you? I feel the same way. I wouldn't. Yeah. Wouldn't give them up. <laughs> and the rest would just be day by day. Just take it day by day. Interesting. All right. Although Jay I Dem. forgot half of them, but 
<laughs> she's already she already listen, lost Listen, listen, listen. What? Let me ask you this. But I got Jeremy, and he reminds me all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's all good. If I keep my old memories, but she gets the new ones. Oh. And she told me the new memories that we make. Would that still be the old memories then at that point? Because then she'd be telling me, but they'd be in my past, and so they'd be old memories. So I would still get memories, new memories, but they would be old to me. Teamwork right there. Teamwork. I didn't go that deep into the question. <laughs> well, what about you? I'd keep my old memories. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'd, I, can't, I, can't, I don't think I can get rid of them. There's too many great ones. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Ever tell you about the time we opened up for Pop Evil? Ever tell you about the time we opened up for Cinderella? Ever tell you about the time? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, and I can hear that at least three times a month. The same oh stories gosh. over and over again. I don't tell the Pop Evil story every oh. month. What? It's just twice a year. Uh huh. <laughs> no, it's more than that. Or any time I talk to my friend Andy because it still pisses him off that I got to do that and he didn't. <laughs> it was pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I was wearing the same shirt as the <laughs> the bass player, the bass, pl- the male bass player <laughs> of Pop Evil. What was the shirt? It was a girl's shirt. <laughs> 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 so yeah, that was quite funny. It was a long, silky button-up shirt. Yeah. It was definitely unisex. Oh, okay. It was fine. He did look good in it. <laughs> well, I'm sure she did too. <laughs> It might look better crumpled up on the corner of my bedroom. Oh, oh. hey <laughs> No. Um, I did. I sat and talked to the bass player for like, what, an hour after they finished their set? We just sat up at the bar and chatted. Super nice guy. All yeah. that was before they actually became super famous. But That's cool. You know. Oh, yeah. It was like right before they became famous. Where was we like, that? We like pulled into this dive bar in South Bend called Cheers and we've been there many a times, and there's a freaking bus sitting out there, and it's like, who the hell are we opening up for? <laughs> and they were leaving to go on tour, and this was oh, their wow. last yep. little hurrah. That's awesome. Yeah, it was crazy. But yeah, um, the the boys from Surpris were there that night. They played, they played also on that because it, it was like four bands, and then they called and said, "Hey, this tour band's coming in. Is it okay to add a fifth band?" And I'm like, "Yeah, that's fine with me." I hate to say it, but the band that went on after Pop Evil, I have no idea who they were. Me. I don't remember who they were. But uh, the Surfers guys were talking to a bunch of the guys in the band back there shooting pool and just hanging out. And the lead singer, who's actually, I think, still the only original member left in the band. I think they've kind of swapped out a little bit, but I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. Um he actually wasn't in the bar with us until they got ready to play. And then he just come up and he actually talked to us a little bit sitting at the table and, and then they hit the stage and it was, you know how you go see bar bands, you've seen band, mm-hmm. band bar bands, you know, yeah. and how they have that specific sound. Mm-hmm. When they took the stage, it was truly like a fucking rock show. Nice. And it was the same PA system, the same everything. There was just a, it was a different sound. And I don't even really know how to explain it, but it was just unbelievable. And yeah, we sat, I sat and did, and I sat and talked to the bass player for about an hour about that and their setup and all that stuff and what they were doing. He can talk to anybody for an hour. I'm talking I to you. That. Talking to you. I talked to you. You've not. <laughs> Let me ask you this. <laughs> how, how many are we on now? Seven? <laughs> when you get in the car, do you talk to your husband if you're going somewhere? Sometimes. Sometimes? Sometimes. <laughs> do you just don't open up your phone and play a fucking solitaire game the whole time you're driving somewhere? I have a farm game, so it's probably <laughs> that one. I All I'm saying is, is that she doesn't... How am I supposed to stay alert and... If she doesn't talk to me and keep me company. Um, energy drinks? I don't he, do energy drinks. He, you know, we've been married for 31 years. Uh-huh. Went out for f- four or five years before that. Uh-huh. you known me for a long freaking time. Yeah, I am not a talker. You do all the talking. 
Were you always not a talker, or is it just always. since you met him? Always. Gotcha. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bullshit. It's not. She is she is the shy one, but ladies and gentlemen, she does not talk what she's in. But if you get her going, she won't shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> but at first, you got to find being that. with you for so long. Oh well, she had no problem texting Ryan all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. oh goodness, that's a good question, though. That's a good question. Yeah, I I, I liked like that. It. Yeah. You made him think really hard. I thought I had a really good answer. I mean, we tag team this problem. I keep my back memories and you keep your, you know, you get the new memories and then tell me. I like that idea. Yeah, vice versa. Yep. I'll just well, have to tell you right after they happen because I might forget if I don't. Oh, my God. It took her. <laughs> it, you know, she says we've been married 31 years. Mm-hmm. We, ha- I, my, my mom had to paint a fucking sign with our uh, anniversary date on it so that she'd remember it. <laughs> it hangs above our door. That's funny. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. But there is a reason behind that because we started dating in February. Uh huh. We got married in February. Uh huh. Your birthday's in February. Oh. It's Valentine's Day in February. Uh huh. So I got the dates mixed up. I kept going. We got married on February 10th. No, we got married on February 8th. We started dating on February 10th. Or, you know, it was, I don't know. It was just. We started dating on February 3rd. (laughs) (laughs) No. I don't know. Anyways. Anyways. Lots of things in February. February is my month. Congratulations. Yes. Mm -hmm. I just take it all in. It's my month to do whatever I want to do. And I use all 28 days, and thank God for fucking leap year, because I get one extra day. (laughs) I go shop where I want to shop. I do what I want to do. I eat what I want to eat. He does. He takes advantage of it, because I remember February 28th. It's my birthday. I was like, it's not your freaking birthday anymore. It's still February. (laughs) And he's all yours. Oh, my God. Every inch of me is all yours. Speaking of birthdays, (laughs) today is officially uh, Star Wars Day as we are recording this. So, may the fourth be with you. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also my granddaughter's third birthday. So, happy birthday, Sora. Happy Happy birthday. birthday. We uh, We did call her just a little bit ago before we come out to record. She's going to come say what... Did she call me Grampy? Yes, she did. <laughs> she was like, Grampy, Grampy. I said, you come stay with me this weekend? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's cute. Yeah, I'm excited. Should be fun. I'm a jungle gym when she's around. Yeah, I believe up it. Up and down, up and down. So on... Uh, on Well, you won't be there. <laughs> when I come back to work next week, um, I'd probably be sporting a sore back. Because <laughs> I'm a jungle gym. And he's going to that, yeah. Ah, we are. We're going to concert on Sunday night. We're gonna go see Blink One Eighty Two in Chicago. Ooh. Did you? Is it? Did you get seats? Yes. Okay. Let's say. Yes. Um, I am going with the Call Guys. Nice. Yes. So Colton and Chico and uh, me, and then uh, Colton's buddy, are are just the four of us are going. And we had a group uh, call last night where we talked about. Uh, uh, the plan for Sunday, you know, the, when we're meeting up and all that. And I'm like, hey, do we have seats or are we standing? And, and Colton's like, nope, I'm too old to stand. I got to ah! have seats. <laughs> oh, my God. You've done it. You've stood at a concert, right, oh, yeah. on the concrete for like uh, six hours. Uh, we went to Rock on the Range in oh. uh, Ohio like twice. And holy cow. The next day, or even on the ride home, my legs were cramping so bad because it's hot, mm-hmm. and you're out there from like eight o'clock in the morning until like th- midnight or one o'clock that you know next morning, and it was just horrible. Sunburnt, and my legs hurt. Mm-hmm. We did uh, Papa Roach last year. Was that last year? Yeah. And 
and we've talked about it on Golden Image Podcast, uh, the Hard Rock in northern Indiana, the northern Indiana Hard Rock. I can't remember what the exact name, but it's the one up in Gary. And they have a Hard Rock Live in the back, and they have the big concerts there. And we've seen Daughtry. We've seen Lita Ford. Um, and we saw Papa Roach. And we went with our friends Billy and Tina, and then Gunner and Sarah and their friends showed up, and we all were there, but we all general mission. And we did, we stood on that concrete for like six and a half to seven hours. And, you know, I, I'm old and I complain about, you know, standing on that. But even but Sarah and Gunner too. were like, this is ridiculous. Yeah, the kids were like sore like days afterwards. And it's mm. like, I had to laugh because it's like, I'm better now. <laughs> <laughs> so anybody going up to Gary, to the Hard Rock, go ahead and just spend the extra 10 bucks. Get the seats. The seats are great. You can see everything wonderful. I mean, we saw... Lita and Daughtry up there and, and yeah. you know, we were in the seating area and it was, it was great. The seats are comfortable and you can see the entire show. And for all that money you spent to go to these fucking concerts, watch the show. Not the guy in front of you who's 10 times taller than you in the back yeah. of his head. Yeah. Um, after the rock on the range and ha- doing that, I made sure that when I went and saw Avenged Sevenfold and, uh, I don't remember who they were with, but I had seats. Mm-hmm. Oh, Hollywood Undead. That's who Papa mm-hmm. Roach, Papa yep. Roach was. Uh, Hollywood Undead was yeah. with them. So I made sure I had seats. Yeah. Along with Bad Wolves. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so jealous. Hashtag Tommy Vest. Vexed. Vexed. My bad. It's not Vest. <laughs> I spelled it wrong on the last hashtag. Oops. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, he's so good. How good is he? He's so good. <laughs> we didn't see him with them, so it was with the new guy. Ugh. <laughs> oh, all right. You ready to get into this? Yeah, sure. Let's do all it. All right. So. Am I going to have, like, bad dreams tonight? Yes. Oh, this will man. fuck you up. No. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Yeah. So it's late at night. You know, you should be getting ready for bed. But just one more episode of your favorite paranormal show. It'll be all right. Then you hear a knock on the door. (laughs) I forgot what you were doing until you just said that. And all of it just rushed back in my head. And I was like, oh, fuck. I am really going to have nightmares. I'm not going to want to go outside when I get home to do chores. I'm not going to want to do it. I thought you were going to, I thought you were trying to knock on your headphones. Like there was a knock on the door. (laughs) Sorry. I'm sorry. (laughs) You can edit all that out. No, no. I'm leaving that in there. (laughs) Then you hear a knock on the door. Who would be here this late at night? So you grab your sweater because it's really cold outside. You open the door. There are two children standing on your porch. One of the children says, Can we use your phone to call our mom to come pick us up? But you have this funny feeling deep in your gut. Something definitely doesn't feel right. The dread starts to spread over you. You stutter. Something about what... (laughs) Come on, I'm working on a serious opening here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. (coughs) Something about... (laughs) You're killing me. I'm sorry, but don't let me forget. I have to tell you something after we're done. Okay. (laughs) That's why I'm laughing. Okay, I'm done. Something about what they are doing out this little... Something about... (laughs) Get me all fucked up. (sighs) Again, one of the kids says, can we come in and call our mom? You're about to say yes when the kids look up and from under their sweatshirt hoods, their eyes are completely black. Well, I thought it was a good written opening, (laughs) but... uh... Did you get it? Did you get it all? Yeah, that's that's my opening. No, no. I thought maybe you missed some of it, but maybe not. No. Okay. That's just my opening. I just wanted to write a little story there. And... That was good. Yeah. Let <laughs> me freaked out now. Black-eyed children or black-eyed kids 
is an urban legend of paranormal creatures that resemble children between the ages of 6 and 16. They have pale skin and black eyes and have reportedly been seen hitchhiking, panhandling, or even at the doorsteps of residential homes. What's panhandling? Panhandling is like they're selling shit door to door. Oh, okay. They're panhandling, right? Okay. Isn't, that, isn't that what the panhandling is? Yeah. I think you're right. They're selling Bibles. They're Joe Hoes? They're Joe. <laughs> if it's not right, Logan will let you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's not shy. He lets me know when I fuck things all up. Like the lady in white. That was yeah. a mess. I don't even know where I will. Yeah. Uh, some people claim that these children have existed since the 1980s. However, most sources say that the legend began in 1996 with posts written by a Texas reporter named Brian Bethel, who wrote about his encounter with the black eyed children. Okay. And then there was silence. Sorry. Well, I'm just trying to think are, are these like contact wearers or are they actually have black eyes? Well, that's a good question. I don't know that. Uh, if you put a contact in, they there's say like that no the, whites there's all? no whites oh, okay. in their eyes. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, they Which, have, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. They have those sclera contacts that completely black out your entire eyes. That's what I, what I thought when she said that. Oh, do they? Mm -hmm. And all the ones I've ever seen were just went over your, basically over your pupils. Hmm. Well, they'd have to for some of those TV shows and shit that they have, mm -hmm. right? I'm sure Supernatural had several of those. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, Brian wrote a story that he published, and here is the story from uh, from 1996. So while he was sitting in his car at a movie theater, his, his car was approached by two boys whose ages he determined to be about 9 and 12, of course, wearing hooded sweatshirts. One was olive-skinned, curly-headed young man. The other was a red-headed, pale-skinned, freckled young man. Um, Bethel actually opened the window of his car just to crack to see what was, you know, without rolling the whole window down. The boys asked for a ride to their mo mother's house to get money to come back to the theater, theater to see the Mortal Kombat movie. Bethel states that uh, when the two boys spoke, he felt this unnatural sense of dread. He told the boys that the movie had already started and that there was no way that they would make it back in time. But the boys pushed harder, saying things like, we're just two kids and we didn't have a we don't have a gun or anything. So it's intelligent. Oh. Yes. Bethel claims that their voices were mechanical and very rehearsed. So they, you know, you, they walk up and they have an exact thing they said. You know, very robotic, I guess is the word. You know, it's like, will you take us to our mother's house to get some money to watch the movie? Interesting. <clears throat> yeah. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you think that they talk like that the whole time? <laughs> I don't know if that scared me. I'd be like, what the hell's the matter with you? <laughs> so like, so if it sounds robotic and rehearsed, so if he would have asked them a different question, they probably would have been like, oh, we don't have a gun. <laughs> <laughs> that could very well be. <laughs> Thank you, sir. May I have another? <laughs> sir, I want some more. <laughs> We went British. We were uh, British robots. Right, right, right. The British, mate. Yeah. Uh, he told the boys that the movie had already started and that there was no way that they would make it back in time. But the boys pushed harder, saying things like, oh, wait, I already said that, didn't I? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> just let you roll. Just roll with it. Terror set in on Bethel when he realized that both boys had black eyes. Like soul orbs is what he called them, with no whites showing. 
soul orbs. Soul like orbs. So they look like they have eyes, but they, they're black. So they're not like just hollowed out sockets. Right, 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 okay. right, 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 right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Bethel started to drive away, but one of the boys banged on the window and yelled, we can't come in unless you tell us it's okay. So let us in. Ooh. You, I'd be like, "Fuck you, dude! Go, go walk so home." They're, yeah, they're little kid demons. Demons. Bethel sped off, and when he looked back, the boys had vanished. Did mm. he get to see his movie? <laughs> I don't know why he was there. It never huh. stated why he was there, sitting in the parking lot. Maybe it was after. Some believe that the children are extraterrestrials. <laughs> and I knew Gross. that right I knew that that would be the face I would get um, or vampires. Now, my thought, well, my thought went into vampires, but I would go more towards the ETs because yeah. the way that he says they're talking and like they're mimicking, but they're not mimicking e- well. <laughs> ET e- e- phone home. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. And and Ouch. don't aliens are usually portrayed with the huge yeah eyes. So if they have a and they're black a too, mask right? Over them, yeah, a mass of uh, yeah, a human mask over them, and then they're gonna have that. I would go with aliens. Yeah. O- others think that there are demons, hmm. maybe even the children of the devil himself. Regardless, if you see a youngster with jet black eyes. You best bet. Your best bet. Because I misspelled that in my... <laughs> <laughs> no way! Your best bet is to get away as fast as you can. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. So I have some stories of encounters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. You going to be okay? I should have worn a diaper. <laughs> <laughs> or brought your bucket. <laughs> You, hey, you got diapers, don't you? I do. Did you want me to go get you one? Well, we <laughs> can pause. Intermission. Intermission. <laughs> so, one of <laughs> one of the other stories that uh, that Bethel actually uh, submitted with his story was this next one that I'm about to tell you. And uh, so I'm going to read this, and then I have some other stories which I found on the lineup.com called slash black eyed children and there's like uh, like six of them they're, they're pretty oh, wow. good so are you ready I guess we're ready okay so it was a uh, in a snowy town within the middle of nowhere of Vermont an el- elderly couple heard the sound of three loud knocks on their door they opened the door and saw two children a boy and a girl parents will be here soon may we come in The children did not make eye contact and just stood there in the doorway. The elderly couple were hesitant, but after a while, they let the boy and girl inside. The children, the the kids, settled on the couch while the wife made some hot cocoa and the husband asked them questions that went unanswered. The wife returned and noticed that her cat was scared and angry with the children. May we please use your restroom? The wife looked at the kids and she finally saw them. The children's eyes were as black as a starless universe. She directed them to the bathroom and returned to her husband who was covering his face with his hands. Did you see their eyes? The husband The husband then showed her his hands full of blood from a nosebleed. The power suddenly went out and the house turned as dark as the kids' eyes. The wife headed to the restroom and was confronted by the voice of the kids at the end of the hall uttering, our parents are here. (laughs) The kids then exited the house, leaving the door wide open. The wife then noticed that there were two men at the end of the driveway. The men were very tall and slender. The wife waved, but did not receive a friendly gesture back. The two men and the children drove away together in one car. Aliens. (laughs) Tall and slender. Uh Uh-huh. Men in black. The power came back on a little bit later after the kids had left. Throughout the next week, weird things happened in the house. 
Three out of the four cats went missing, and the fourth had been found dead in the pool in a pool of its own blood. The husband continued to have nosebleeds, finally went to the doctor, where he was diagnosed with a very aggressive skin cancer. Wow. That was the other story that Bethel wrote when he wrote about his encounter with the black-eyed children. How do you that's, feel about that? Yeah, that is that's strange, and I I have to agree. I would think more more alien than demon. I would think. Mm-hmm. But he didn't get probed. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they got a new way about it. They just need to enter your house. Yeah. In 2010, a man encountered two black-eyed teenagers outside his place of work. It was an ordinary July night in Ohio. And the man was in the middle of his night shift. Craving a cigarette, he stepped out the outside the building and noticed two teenage boys across the street. As he smoked, he realized that the boys were staring at him. Wearily returned to the safety of his cubicle and tried to refocus on his work. Only to see, through the security cameras, that the boys had appeared in front of his building, motioning him for to come back outside. Yeah. Fed up, he went to the door, contemplating whether or not he should call the police. As if they had read his mind, the boys insisted that such an action was unnecessary. All they needed was to use the phone. He refused. And he watched in horror as one of the boys continued to stare up at the security camera while the other ventured to the back of the building, watching the cameras as, as though they could see that he, what he was doing inside the building. With frayed nerves, he contacted police, watching the teenagers on the video feed the entire time. When the officers arrived on the scene, they could not locate the teenage boys, despite the fact that the man never tore his eyes away from the video feed. So he could see them, but they couldn't. Yeah. Oh, wow. Hmm. Hmm. That story was called All Work and No Play. <laughs> This one's called The Boy by the <laughs> Truck. Okay. On March 17th of 2008, a 12-year-old boy had a bone-chilling experience in an outlet parking lot. While waiting in his mother's truck his mother to fin- for his mother to finish getting a haircut, he saw a boy walking across the parking lot. Thinking it was a friend from school, the boy banged on the window until the other boy turned. Realizing it was not his friend, the boy in the truck watched in confusion as the strange kids walked up and stared through the window. The boy caught one glance at the other boy's solid black eyes and knew that he was staring into the face of evil. You must let me in, the black eyed boy demanded. Panic, the boy in the car crouched under the glove compartment. After several minutes, the black-eyed boy finally disappeared. When the, when the boy's mother returned to the truck, she informed her son that the black-eyed child had come into the salon demanding the keys to her car. Thankfully, the boy's mom did not give in. Hmm. I wish you guys could see J-Dub's face right now. <laughs> so... How could he get into there if he has he can't go in unless he's invited? I don't unless know. it's a public place. Then that uh, could I would be. Say so. How do vampires get in and out of places like that? They it's, can't it's, go into somebody's house, but they could go into yeah, you a can restaurant. Go into, yeah, yeah, because everybody's welcome in a restaurant. It's, a, it's not yeah. private. Yeah. There you go. I got it. Okay. This one's called bumps in the night. Bumps in the night. Are you going to have, like, nightmares about Probably. this Probably. <laughs> because I... I think I have to visually see something to have a nightmare about it. Just hearing about it won't make me, but if I actually... Don't show me pictures. I don't want to see pictures of them. No. Do you, do you have pictures? No. Okay, good. I have Darth Vader over here with his black eyes looking at me, so... <laughs> One night, a man was dozing in the spare bed in his infant daughter's room when he heard a strange bump outside his house. Initially, the man thought nothing of it, believing it to be the family cat. But the thumps continued. The man walked. The man checked the porch, but the cat was nowhere to be found. 
when he walked in the kitchen and found two figures loitering outside his front door. They knocked on the door. Both were boys, around 10 or 11, and gave off a pungent moldy, moldy odor. Oh, yuck. Ew, yeah. May we use your telegraph, one of the boys said, looking up at the man. In his horror, the man realized that both boys had eyes that were completely black. Ignoring the odd remark about telegraph, the man told the boys he didn't have service in his house and shut the door. As the man slowly made his way back to his daughter's room, the two boys stumped on the walls. The man clutched his daughter to his chest as the boys incessantly knocked against the windows. Their eerie eyes and an awful persistence made the man too scared to fall asleep. He remained crouched on the floor of the room for several hours, fighting to ignore the knocks that occurred every couple of minutes. The moment his wife's alarm clock went off, however, the knocking ceased, and the black-eyed children were nowhere to be seen. Hmm. Was it a dream? Could that be? Could, would that? Could that be a dream? I mean, you know what I'm saying. I suppose it could be. Not one that I'd want. But I mean, think about it. The alarm goes off, and then everything just stops. When you just kind of like woke up. I just, I mean, just to theorizing on that one a little bit. Yeah. Maybe. Trick or treat. <laughs> 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 this, one, this one will fuck with your head because mm, one October day, a man was walking up his front door when he realized that his neighbor had not set out his typical array of Halloween decorations. He spotted the neighbor and asked him about it. The neighbor informed him that a terrifying experience the year prior deterred him from participating in Halloween this year. It was around midnight, uh, the neighbor recounted, when he heard a knock on the door. Thinking it was a band of late-night trick-or-treaters, the man grabbed a bowl of candy and shuffled to the door. He swung the door open and was about to greet the two male teens when his body became rigid with fear. Both boys had pitch-black eyes, void of any whites around the irises. One of the boys asked to come in and use the phone. Luckily, he was overwhelmed with dread and the man refused. Midnight? Come on. Well, no I no trigger treaters at that time. I would think that midnight would be uh, would be a little too late for that. Let's do let's do uh, two more. What do you say? Okay. Let's do the one that got in on November nineteenth, nineteen ninety two. A man was watching Evil Dead while his wife and children were sound asleep in their rooms upstairs. It was 1.30 a.m. when he decided to head off to bed after the movie was over. Suddenly, there was a loud pounding on his front door, and what stood behind the door would change his life forever. There stood a boy and a girl, 8 and 11 respectively, who never looked up and were standing barefoot in the Michigan winter. Despite his anger... The man allowed the children to enter and allow them to phone their parents. But when he went to lend them the phone, they were gone. In dead silence, he heard the first scream coming from one of the upstairs bedrooms. When the man reached his wife's room, he was wet, met with a devastating sight of his wife in a pool of blood. A terrifying sound of bones snapping, flesh ripping, and he saw bare feet of the children that he had just let in. Before he could act, the barefoot children moved swiftly to the to his kids' room and locked the door. Despite the man's best efforts, he could not help his children and stood helpless behind the door. When the act was done, the door slowly creeped open, and there stood the barefoot children covered in blood they stood defiantly with awful grins and eyes completely black like the devil himself (laughs) 
that is the only one that I know of where they actually talk about them killing or yeah because he was hmm. the only stupid one to let him in well other than the old couple but yeah but the old couple to be fair they never saw their eyes when they because you know they kind of had the hooded over yeah yeah on Thanksgiving 2015, a suburban America in suburban America, a woman was enjoying the holiday on her own in her own house. It was around 7:30 p.m. when she heard a knock on the door. Believing it to be her neighbors, she opened the door without looking. However, there stood two boys outside of her door with an eerie stance. They avoided eye contact but kept insisting to enter the house. The woman became hesitant, which to when the older of the boys became persistent. It is here that they finally looked up and the woman noticed that they had completely black eyes. She shut the door on them, but they continued to knock on the door. Eventually, she fell asleep during the early morning with all the lights on and the TV playing. But when she awoke, she found all the lights turned off and the TV filled with black and white static. There had been someone or something in her house. How'd they get in? I don't know. Oh, hmm. dun, dun, dun. dun 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 So there you go. Black There's eyed a children. Few of the stories of the black eyed children. Those are good. I'm telling you though, man, you know, the more you think about it, I mean they could just show up at your front door. No, why'd you go there? But think about it. That Ozzy would. Ozzy would, yeah, take care of them. He'd let you know they were there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My dog would let us know they were there, but then she'd go run and hide. Mm-hmm. Oh. Well, they said the cat was mad. Mm-hmm. So. So what do you think? Well, you guys are leaning towards aliens. Yeah. But I don't know the second to the last one about killing and all that i mean that sounds more like vampires or something but i don't know that could be a could be a demon yeah that one about the killing makes me think that you know because he used that as a story like you know like that he he killed the, the his family and just blamed it on something like that. Oh. Because maybe he read about that and he's like, oh, this will be a good uh, excuse to kill my family. Blame it on black-eyed children. Murder. Murder. It could very well be. Yeah. Or it could be aliens. Pray that they're not. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> aliens, See, demons. What do you think? Uh, I'm I I lean more towards demon. I, to be honest, I don't I don't know that I, I buy into the alien side of that story. Um, you know, I I guess I fall into the fact that I think that if it, if it's a demon, like the old couple, you know, doing I don't I don't know. <laughs> it's 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 a, it's a tough. Yeah, you can theorize either way. Yeah, or any way you want to on what what they may be. But yeah, so I mean, I I just lean. I I'm, in my mind is more demon than it is alien. But they, you know, there's different stories where the kids actually have kind of clawed fingers, but you know things like that. So which you know that could lead into vampires or or whatever. But I don't know. It's just uh, I just thought it was an interesting. I'd never I'd never heard of uh, heard of it, and I heard of a story of uh, um, somebody had called in on a on another podcast I was listening to where her mom had run into black eyed children at a Walmart at like midnight. Oh, and I was like, oh, I want to learn more about these black eyed children. Yep, so that's all it takes is just seeing it something or hearing a yeah. story, and then it's like, oh. Oh, so yeah, I dug a little deep on that, and uh, that's uh, what I found. The, some of the stories I thought they were kind of interesting. Nice. I uh, I didn't like it, 
but I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I watched, I saw a video on Facebook, and it, it's weird that you did it on this tonight because it was just the other day that I watched it, and they had actually reenacted it. Oh, really? So, yeah, like it, it was kind of like cartoonish, but not. Um, this guy and his, his son and grandkids had been there, and th- they were like, okay, did, Grandpa, we're going to go home. So they left, and they had like a 30-minute drive. Well, he said that 10 minutes later, the his grandkids were at the door and asking to use the phone. And he's like, no, where's your dad? And they are like, can we use your phone? Let us in. And then like a few minutes later... His phone's ringing, and he's like, I'm not going to answer it because, like, these kids are here. I don't know what's going on. And it was his son on the answering machine saying, hey, Dad, just want to let you know we got home safe. Oh. Yeah. That creeped me out. <laughs> yeah. So they can mimic. Mm-hmm. That's even more interesting. There's more details to the Black Eyed Children's story. Exactly, yeah. And... Could be anything, and that's why you lean towards aliens because they think they just mm-hmm. shape shifted into or skinwalkers. Yeah, and yeah, that was where I was heading. Maybe, it is, maybe they are skinwalkers. Are skinwalkers known to have black eyes? I don't know. Logan, United States yeah, Paranormal yeah, at Gmail dot com. Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's wrap this up. You guys get you. That, yeah, that was you, good. That, that was, was good. Yes. All right. I feel pretty good about that one. I liked it. All right. Well, thank you for listening to the United States Paranormal. Um, if you have any suggestions, you know, you can always email us at United States Paranormal at gmail.com. Please do. We love we love getting fan emails. Let us know if you like what we're doing or whether you hate what we're doing. You know, we just like to hear from you. And you can always check out our merch store at the United States the United States of Paranormal dot com. For some I'm so sorry. For some reason I cannot talk tonight for shit. So good thing you're almost done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing. Um if you like United States of Paranormal, maybe you like something else in the Golden Mojo Entertainment Empire. You can get the call guys. They're all about pop culture and, you know, movie reviews, so on and so forth. Uh, join Colton and Gunner and uh, feel free to yell at your car radio as you listen to Colton's really bad take on certain movies like the Goonies. Mm. <laughs> uh, on Tuesdays, you have the gold, you have Golden Image podcast where it's me, Chico and the Skywalker. We like to go and do things. So you'll want to go do things. So we may go to a restaurant or whatever and check it out and tell you all about it. On the off weeks when we're not doing that, it is I, Golden J, doing interviews with interesting people doing interesting things. That's right. I got a I got a nice little list. I got a couple couple new ones coming up. Uh, I'm pretty excited. Yeah, Bobby's little friend Ryan. <laughs> Hi Ryan, little friend. What the hell? God. Oh, I'm just kidding. I'm excited to talk to him. So uh, we're going to be recording that here in the next week or so. So. I imagine that this comes out on Wednesday and we're doing that Wednesday night. He'd be like, hey, you're a little friend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super excited. So uh, go check that out. Golden Image Podcast. Interesting. I'm calling it the Golden Odyssey series. Interesting people doing interesting things. Nice. Um, of course, on Wednesdays, it is United States Paranormal with the three of us every week telling you some crazy ass stories from some crazy ass city is about some crazy ass creatures on thursdays it is the indiana chiefs fans they are on hiatus right now but they're coming back in august just before the season starts we're going to talk about the draft that just happened and all that stuff so super excited to get back to talking some kansas city chiefs football Football. and then on fridays it is a double dose of the empire. You can listen to Murder Nerds with Ashley and Alicia as they talk true crime all over the country. Or if you're not into true crime and not into murder, then maybe you like to book. Do you like to read? I have the podcast for you. It's called A Court of Books and Booze. They are your basement book club. So grab a bottle of hooch, head to the basement, and read your favorite book. <laughs> 
on their off weeks, they do a really cool thing called uh, the Milk and Cookies edition where they talk about children's books. The first, uh, the first three, the first three have been with Aspen. I guess some other stuff coming up too. So I'm, I'm super excited. So there you go. That is the Empire. The Empire. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and thank everybody for listening and thank everybody for supporting at all these other podcasts they uh they really do work hard and uh, it's a lot of work i don't know that people realize how how hard pod you know getting an episode ready is until you get in here and start doing it and then it's like <laughs> oh shit, i don't have enough information yeah i have too much information and or then, you can't talk yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i was going there and then you can't talk all right so, all right, until uh, until next time, we'll see you on the other side. Bye. Bye. To support other Golden Mojo Entertainment Productions, check out Golden Image Podcast, The Call Guys, and Murd Nerds wherever you enjoy listening to podcasts. To see photos and find new episodes of the United States of Paranormal, follow us on our social media, Twitter at T-U-S-O-P. P-O-D or Instagram at the United States of Paranormal and Facebook the United States of Paranormal if you have a place that you'd like us to look into or would like to share your spooky story that we can read on the air please email us at the United States of Paranormal at gmail.com <laughs>